In this video we're going to look at the binomial distribution. Now to first start looking at the binomial distribution we first have to look at what are called Bernoulli trials. And Bernoulli trials are um, experiments that have these following properties. Now the first one is, is that there's only two possible outcomes and we usually refer to them as success and failure. The second property is that the probability of success is the same for each trial. So every time you do the experiment it has the same probabilities of success. And we'll call that little p, probability of success little p. And the probability of failure, which is 1 minus p, we'll call q. Now the outcomes from different trials are independent and there are n trials conducted. So you essentially do the same experiment you know, over and over and over again, n times. And every time you do the experiment, it is independent of the other times that you've done the experiment. So let's take a look at how to develop the probability of k successes um, out, of, out of n. Now the first thing we want to do is look at uh, how many, suppose we had k successes in a row followed by n minus k failures. And so they're in that specific order, k, k successes and then n minus k failures. That'll give us a total of n trials. Now we know that because they're all independent, we can multiply their probabilities. And so we have probability of success times the probability of success and so on. We have that k times, then probability of failure, then probability of failure. And we have that n minus k times. Now since these are all p's, the successes are all p's, and the failures are all 1 minus p, then that probability of, of those occurring in that exact order will be p to the k times 1 minus p raised to the n minus k. All right, so that's the probability if they were in that exact order. Now suppose we perform the you know n experiments but we don't care what order they're in, the, the k successes. In other words, they can be in any order or any location. And um, we know that um, by doing that, we have combinations. And because we order doesn't matter in that experiment. And so in that case, we have n or k from n combinations using our binomial coefficient. And so... <clears throat> the probability of k successes in any order out of the, the n that we perform is just going to be that each one of them will be the same probability that we had up above p to the k <clears throat> and 1 minus p to the n minus k but we'll multiply times that binomial coefficient k from n and we call this the binomial distribution function and so I've, I've written it down here again using q so k successes out of n trials, we have the binomial coefficient k from n times p to the k and q raised to the n minus k. Now it has some interesting properties. The mean of that random variable that has that, pro the, that binomial distribution, the mean is equal to n times p. The variance for that random variable is just n times p times q. And we're not going to calculate those, but you can determine that that's, that's true. Now I've written here, or I've done here some graphs for different binomial distribution functions. In all of these graphs, I have the same number of trials, 10 trials. And for each one of them I have a different probability of success. Um, I should have written them over here again but the, the probabilities are written on the left here. The first one, the probability of success is 0.1. The second one is 0.3. The third is 0.7. And the last one is 0.9. And notice how the sort of the peak shifts from one side to the other. Um, now again these are all with n trials and uh, trials. Now remember the the mean is going to be equal to n times p. So the, the first one would the mean will be at 1 
because we have 0.1 times 10. Here the mean will be at 3, this one the mean will be at 7, and this one the mean will be at 9. Okay, so those are the kind of uh, plots that you would get for the distribution functions for the binomial distribution. Now in this one, I've kept the probability the same, 0.2, but I've changed the number of outcomes. And so the number of outcomes on the first one is 10, second one 20, third one 40, and the last one 100. And so you can see the general shape of the plot and the 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 limit on each of these is equal to the number of trials so you can kind of get an idea of what the shape might look like all right so let's do an example suppose we have a lumber yard and of all the boards bought at this lumber yard 10 percent are unusable you know they might be warped or have some cracks in them or something like that now if 40 boards are bought what's the probability that at least 38 will be usable? Okay, now when you're doing these these problems, obviously you want to look to see is it a Bernoulli trial? And we're, we're assuming that all of these boards are independent. Won't necessarily be true, usually at a lumber yard, but we'll assume that they are. And that um, therefore the each board will be considered a trial. And <clears throat> um, they will be Bernoulli trials. Now, uh, the other thing you want to look at when you're doing the problems is what is a success? And therefore, and then also what is its probability? Well, we're, we're in the problem it says, what is the probability that at least will be usable? So we might want to say that in this case, usable is a success. So we'll equate success with the board is usable. Therefore, we want to know the probability P for success is what's the probability of it being usable? Well, we we're told that the probability of it being unusable is 10%, so the probability of it being usable will be 90%. And so P will be equal to 0.9 and Q <clears throat> will be 0.1. So the probability that we can have, th out of 40 boards, we'll have 38 or more will be usable, will be equal to the probability of third that we have 38 usable plus the probability of 39 plus the probability of 40 usable boards. Now once we've got all these defined, P and Q and N, I didn't write it down, but N is 40, then we just have to plug in those values into our binomial distribution. So we've got 38 from 40, P to the 38, Q to the 2, plus 39 from 40, P to the 39, Q to the 1, and 40 from 40, p to the 40, q to the 0. Now if you plug all those numbers in, you'll find that you get 0.2228 as the probability of having 38 or more usable boards. Now I plotted the distribution function, the binomial distribution function for that example. So point, n, uh, sorry, p is 0.9 and n is 40 and you can see what it looks like um, and I also drew a line in here where the mean occurs which would be 40 times 0.9 so it occurs you can kinda of see it's there light colored <clears throat> alright so that's what the distribution function looks like let's do another example now we got a really sad situation here one cookie in five is broken all right, very sad. <laughs> All right, so suppose we're we're really hungry and we're going to grab 20 cookies out of the, you know, out of the ones that are available. We want to know what's the probability that four of the cookies will be broken or the probability at most two will be broken or the probability at least four broken. Okay, again, we're assuming that the cookies break randomly and are independent of each other. And so we'll assume that this is a Bernoulli trial where each cookie is a trial. Now what is a success and what is its probability? Okay now we're looking at notice that the, most of the questions are or I guess all of these are asking about broken cookies. So in this case it's kinda of strange to think of a broken cookie as a success but that's what we're gonna do since the probability the problem is asking about broken cookies. So broken is success so the probability of a broken cookie 
is one fifth. So we'll set that equal to P. The number that we're doing, the number of trials is 20, since we're doing we're grabbing 20 cookies. And therefore Q, of course, is going to be four fifths. <clears throat> So the probability of four broken cookies out of the 20 will be f our binomial coefficient four from 20, p to the four, q to the 20 minus four. And I wrote out those values, four, eight, four, five for the binomial coefficient, 0.2 to the four and 0.8 to the 16. And that gives us 0.2182. Now the probability of at most two broken cookies means that we can have either 0, 1, or 2. Don't forget the 0. Um, so we have the probability of less than or equal to 2. We'll have the probability of 0 plus the probability of 1 plus the probability of 2. And I plug those in. 0 from 20, 1 from 20, and 2 from 20. And after you plug in those values and do the calculations, you get 0 0.2061. Now the probability of at least four broken, we know that that'll be the probability of four or more broken. And we can redo that as one minus the probability of less than four broken. Now we've already calculated three of these up here. Uh, so the probability of less than four will be zero, one, two, or three. So I plugged in the value we got from above plus the third one, th choosing three from 20 and did that subtraction and got point eight point uh, sorry point five eight eight six as the probability of at least four broken cookies. And I drew the or I plotted the binomial distribution for that situation where P is one fifth and N is equal to twenty. And you can see what it looks like. The distribution goes from zero to twenty. Don't forget the zero term. And I drew a line, a lighter colored line at n equals, uh, sorry, at the mean, which is going to be p times n. So 1 fifth times 20 will give us 4. So the mean is right there at 4.